Hello everybody, this is Shar Dickerson and welcome to another uh, tutorial or video tutorial that I'm offering to our El Paso ISD teachers. So for today, I'm going to go over real quick how to create uh, your Teams meeting in your Schoology course. So this will be part of our Schoology 101 and also for our Teams meeting 101. So first and foremost, you can see on my screen, I have here um, our EPISD Plaza or class link sign in. So make sure to sign in. Um, you can also access uh, Schoology via episd.schoology.com. Again, that's episd.schoology.com. So as you can see in my screen, I have uh, different um, categories or clusters of apps or group of apps put together. And pretty much my Schoology is under what I call EPISD teacher tools. And from there, I'm going to look for my Schoology icon or Schoology app and click on it. Once I'm in, I'm going to wait for ClassLink to uh, link my account uh, through Active Directory, and that's what we call our ClassLink one click. And I'm going to scroll down and go to my course. So thinking and remembering that it should be an existing course, I'm going to go ahead and click on my sixth grade uh, mathematics uh, first period course. And this is the course that I have been using all throughout uh, the different training sessions that I've been offering our El Paso ISD teachers. So in your course, um, I'm just going to click on Teams meeting. So you can see here as I zoom in, there's our Teams meeting link. So all uh, Teams meeting. Uh, app is available in our courses. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And once that happens, it's going to bring me to this window right here. So it's going to say, welcome to Microsoft Teams meetings. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and click sign in. And pretty much we have to make sure that we are logged in in our Office 365 and that is linked. Okay, so once it is linked with our Active Directory, it is important now for me for the, my next step to create a meeting link, because that's what I'm wanting to do is to create a Teams meeting link so I can uh, schedule my video conference. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Meeting Link. And from here, it's going to give uh, you another page. And pretty much this page is telling us to enter a title. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, First Period. Uh, sixth grade mathematics with Mrs. Dickerson. Okay. And once I enter that title, I'm going to select a date. So uh, I'm going to schedule this, let's say, on April 13th, and I'm going to schedule it from 1 to 1.30. So you can see the uh, earlier time have been grayed out already, meaning that time has already passed. So I have uh, no choice but to enter the next set of hours or set of 30 minutes or whatever time is available uh, for the afternoon. So I'm going to choose 1.30 and it's going to be a 30 minute video conference or virtual meeting and I'm going to go ahead and click create. Once I click create, we're going to be brought to this page and it's very tempting to click that link, join Microsoft Teams meeting, but that is not what we are supposed to do. Instead, we're going to click copy. Remember, in our earlier step, we have actually created a meeting link. So now once we create the meeting link, our next step is to copy the link. So once I click copy and I'll just click it again for good measure, I'm going to go back now to the main page of my course, which is found in the materials section. So I'm going to click that. And once I'm in the um, front page of my course again, or the beginning page of my course, I'm going to scroll down. Now, knowing that I've already created folders for my course, I have a folder called virtual meetings. So I'm going to click in there. And you can see here all the different uh, video conferencing or virtual meetings I, I have set up. But I don't have the one for April 13th, which is Monday. So I'm going to click Add Materials. And under my Add Materials, as I zoom in, I have a choice to either just add it as a link or better yet, add as a page. 
So I'm going to choose add a page simply because as part of best practice, I would like to provide my students with clear and detailed instructions to make sure that um, they know what they're going to be doing or what will be expected of them before they join the meeting or the video conference. So I'm going to click add page. And once I'm in add page, uh, just wait for the system to load up and it's going to give us uh, a window where we can now start creating our page. So for my page, I'm going to choose the name April 13, 2020, because that is a Monday. And I'm going to put in here first period because it is for my first period class, sixth grade mathematics with Mrs. Dickerson. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste command V or control V. And there's my meeting. Okay, there's the meeting now uh, for my um, for my virtual conference. But like what I said, I wanted to provide my students with clear and detailed instructions so that there won't be any excuses and they're not going to tell me that, oh, I forgot about that. I didn't know that we were supposed to bring this or bring that or present this or present that. So I I'm going to make sure, double measure, I'm going to copy the title paste it in here and uh, make the font a little bit darker and create a, um, a bigger letter and bigger, um, you know, bigger font uh, so that they can see it right away. And even um, I would change the color just to make it very eye catching. And then underneath the title, which I pretty much copied from the page title, I'm going to add here before joining the virtual meeting or video conference, please make sure to bring your completed assignment and be ready to present with your classmates with your class, okay? So I'm going to highlight that. Um, clear some text formatting because somehow it looked um, um, faded away. I'm going to increase the font size and um, there it is. So now it has a darker text and it's easier to read. Also, I'm going to adjust some spaces in there and at the bottom, I'm going to add here, um, Thank you, um, Mrs. Dickerson, okay? So again, you can see the text is kind of grayed out. So I'm just going to clear the formatting and make the font a little bit bigger, and there it is. And also for this text right here, I'm going to make it bold just to, ma just to make sure that my students see it, and I also increase the text. And I just made some adjustments in here. Um, oops just to make sure that it's clear, okay? All right, let me just do a Command Z on that one just to undo that, and there it is, all right? And from here, I will just uh, click Create. And once I click Create, you can see that the April 13th is somehow here at the bottom, so you can actually move that. So you have a choice to move, um, Oops, sorry, somehow I can't, I'm having a hard time moving, but let me just move this, there you go. I just had to capture it really well, and there it is, April 13th. Now, if let's say um, you would like to have a different look on what you have, you know, you have just created, you wanna make sure all the details are shown because when it has this kind of look, the, uh, the students will have to click on that link, like what I'm doing right now, in order to see the details, and that's how it looks, right? Now, another way, I'm going just back to the virtual meetings. If you don't want them to have that extra click, uh, you can click on the gear here and click edit again. And at the bottom of your page, uh, there is a, um, a symbol there that right now it is currently showing display on new page, but I wanna display it inline. So I'm gonna click that. And now once I click save changes, uh, the details of what I have entered in the description box of this page will now be displayed in line. So let me just show you that so that you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to click save. And now comparing it to the others where all my other um, 
you know, scheduled virtual meetings or video conference will be displayed on a new page. The one for April 13th is now displayed online. Now you might be wondering, do I always have to create a new Teams meeting every time I, um, um, you know, I create for the next day, uh, like for April 14th or April 15th. Well, the nice thing about Microsoft Teams uh, meetings so far, uh, the meetings that you create are not completely deleted or the link are not left um, dead or uh, not available. So it's always an ongoing uh, live. It's always um, um, that meeting. You can always go back. You can always rejoin. Um, I know that Microsoft Teams meeting is thinking of making some updates with regard to that. But for now, while you can still recycle uh, your Teams meeting that if you have already started for a class period or for, for a class, you don't have to keep on recreating. All you have to do, let's say, if I am to schedule this for April 15th, then all I have to do using the same link, I can just click on the gear, click edit, and from here, change the date to the 15th on the page title. And of course, also, I have to make sure I do the same. So it's not going to confuse my students. I have to do the same for the title inside the description box. And from there, I click Save, and now my April 13th has been changed to April 15th, and this is for my first period, sixth grade mathematics with Mrs. Dickerson. And that's it. So now when your students log into your Schoology course, and if you happen to have a virtual meetings folder, so let's go in there right here, just showing you my sample class. If they go click on your virtual meetings, they can right away see what you have scheduled in under that folder using the page or using a page uh, section to publish your meetings. And that's the end of our uh, short but sweet video tutorial. Uh, I'm, uh, please uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'm going to make sure to add uh, more tutorials in the future. Thank you very much and thank you for watching and thank you for listening.